The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he had sat down, he gathered his disciples around him and began to teach them. How blessed are the poor in spirit. The reign of God is theirs. Blessed too are the sorrowing. They shall be consoled. Blessed are the lowly, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for holiness. They shall have their fill. Blessed are they who show mercy. Mercy shall be theirs. Blessed are the single-hearted, for they shall see God. Blessed too the peacemakers. They shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those persecuted for holiness' sake. The reign of God is theirs. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every other kind of slander against you because of me. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward in heaven shall be great. The Gospel of the Lord. The theme of my reflection this morning on this uh, solemnity is celebrating their struggles. We are celebrating people today, human beings, people like you and me, people who have lived, worked, and passed on from this mortal earth. What we are, they were. What we are going through now, they survived from a while ago. Some maybe this year, some last year, some maybe a long time. But these people, human beings, who we are human beings, are now being celebrated. We could call them heavenly celebrities. You know what I mean? You know, people like being a celebrity. So if you want to be a celebrity, this is the opportunity. And you're going to be the heavenly celebrity. <laughs> Think about that. Maybe there were nothing in the eyes of the men and women of their time. Maybe they were not even known. They were not popular. They were not rich. Maybe they were not successful in our human way of rating people. Maybe you could have even called them failures or disappointments. But now, they are rejoicing. Imagine that. And they're celebrating in heaven. God is celebrating them. And they are being celebrated too. They oftentimes pass on as unsung heroes, you know. No one knows their name. We don't call them for any prayers. Or except we say, all saints of God, pray for us. They are not identified. So they are unsung heroes of our faith. But on this solemnity of all saints, we celebrate these people like this. We do not celebrate just the canonized saints, those we know, but those we do not know. But those, all those who now enjoy the happiness of heaven. And we hope that in this group, our beloved ones, our loved ones, are among them. Our relations and friends could be among them. And with the eyes of faith, we see them shine in God's firmament like glorious stars. This multitude of saints in heaven, therefore, includes all the baptized of every epoch and from everywhere and from every age, including children, young people, women, men. 
The first reading from the book of Revelation chapter 7 was John's vision of heaven. You know, God gave John the opportunity of having a vision of heaven. Remember, no eye has seen, no mind could conceive, but John has the singular opportunity that God opened heaven for him. And in this vision, God showed him all of those who have arrived home in heaven. In this first reading from the, the, the author of the book described them as a great multitude which no man could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues. Today's feast is also about us. It tells us who we are as individuals and as a people, as a church. In the second reading, St. John said, We are already children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. As children of God, we have a glorious future because God, in his goodness and generosity, wants us to share his love and life. As a church, as a people, we could observe and cherish the tripartite relationship between the living, that is us, and the souls in purgatory, this group, which I remember then tomorrow, they are still on the way. They have, they have passed on from this life, but yet not in heaven. And then the triumphant saints who we celebrate today. This the church calls the communion of saints, and we profess this through the apostolic creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Our belief in the communion of sins means that we are all united like a family around Jesus Christ, our Savior. The sins, therefore, as a member of one family in the church, encourage us in our own struggles, and that is the point of my reflection today, because they have also endured struggles themselves, like we are doing today. Sometimes we think that saints are people who do not have any difficulties in life. Nope. We think that saints are specially blessed by God so that they just move on straight into heaven. Nope. Strength. Saints are people like you and me. And so today they have survived the struggles which we may not be going through may be different, they grew from strength to strength in their struggles. They do not shy away from their struggles. They embraced their struggles. They faced it head on, and they matured in the Lord. And through these, their struggles, they were purified. They learned how to forgive and to love, and now they enjoy the happiness and blessedness which comes from following Jesus Christ as we heard in the Beatitudes in the Gospel reading. We see in this journey of growth and in the great people of the Bible and in the life of the saints who were canonized. What do I mean here? Because we do not know other saints not named, so we have to use the example of the saints that were canonized to show us part of their struggles. For instance, Moses, the great leader that led the, 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 the Israelites uh, for out of Egypt. Remember him? Do you know he had a speech impediment? Remember when God called him, he said, I do not know, I cannot speak well. He doesn't know how to, he, he couldn't speak well. And that's why God gave him Aaron to be his mouthpiece. Think about that. So what impediment do you think you have that you think that God did not love you? Moses had one. Remember, Moses also killed someone even though he was trying to defend an Israelite. But that is murder. He killed someone. What of St. Peter, the great St. Peter who has the keys to heaven? Remember, he denied Jesus Christ not once, 
not twice, but three times. And he was warned before. You know what I mean? Jesus warned him. What of St. Thomas? He said, I doubt him. I do not believe he rose from the dead. It's not possible. Unless he gave conditions for faith. What of St. Paul, the great evangelizer? St. Paul at one point prayed, God, I have a weak point. I want this thorn removed from my flesh. And what did God tell him? My grace is enough for you. I remember all his, he suffered. He was given 39 lashes on one occasion. Imagine a man being flogged 39 times, lashes on one occasion. What of St. Augustine? You know him very well. He was well into the world. He was way into the world. But when he came back, he was strong and stood firm for, for Jesus. What of St. Paul, St. John Paul II, the Pope we all knew? What of him? Remember, he was shot. Someone wanted to kill him. He survived and went to the prison and prayed for him, forgave him. I remember this John Paul II saint also suffered from Parkinson's disease. I met him in the year 2000, so at least I'm happy I met someone who, who is now in heaven. <laughs> so my people, what's the, pro what was the point here? They had their struggles, but they overcame. They overcame their struggles, or they managed their struggles and moved on to do the right thing. And that is the point. These are the ones, when the elder answered uh, John, he said, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. We are challenged today to wash our robes, to survive the great distress, the great struggles of our life. Remember today we might add a very important struggle we are going through today, technology, internet struggles. Think about that. So these are things that will help us in our journey to heaven. Even though there may be obstacles, but we have to overcome them to move on. St. Bernard said, but I tell you, when I think of this sense, I feel myself inflamed by a tremendous yearning. May today's feast inflame us. May today's feast galvanize us. May today's feast urge us because they'll be telling us, come on, my brothers and sisters. They are up there telling us, come on, here is God. Come and join us. And that's our determination today. Brothers and sisters, may we keep, keep up the, the struggles. May we keep up the faith. May we never surrender, even in these days of the crisis rocking the church. I tell you something. This church that has been wounded has produced great sense. So even in this time of tribulation and turbulence, you could make it. You could survive. Do not run away. Do not bow out. Let's move on. God bless you all. Regina Jenny, let her reign, alleluia. Quia quem menu isti portat.